Please welcome the chairman of the Independent Games Festival, Brandon Boyer. Hello. Uh, welcome to, the, hey, how's it going? Welcome to the Independent Games Festival Awards. Um, thanks. So, 2013 marks our 15th annual ceremony, a decade and a half celebrating the best games created outside the traditional industry structure. When the IGF was first founded in 1998, it was the year of Metal Gear Solid and Zelda 64. It was the year that we got Half-Life and the year we got Grim Fandango. And the road to independent success at the time was an extremely difficult one, with very few avenues to create and distribute work for developers that weren't able to play the retail game. The IGF was founded that year to highlight the achievements of those that set out to blaze their own trails and make more direct connections to an audience they knew existed for them somewhere. In the years since then, we've seen those same creators of Half-Life turn to the IGF to find brilliant new talent that could help expand their world, We've seen the people behind Grim Fandango creating new adventures funded directly by their fans. True independent, de <laughs> True independent development is no longer simply wishful thinking or a marginal pursuit. And this year's finalists prove, maybe more than ever before, that one of the greatest outcomes of this new model is a proliferation of diverse voices, radically personal and distinct visions that aren't just beautiful diversions, but creations that have the power to change how we view the world and each other. That's something I hope will continue to grow, as the IGF itself does, in all the years to come, none of which would be possible without all of you here tonight. And so thanks to all of the entrants, judges, jurors, and players who since the very beginning have put so much of their time, energy, and goodwill into turning this festival into what it is today and helping us guide it into the future. So, you can applaud that if you want. <laughs> so, before we get going tonight, we want to extend a special thanks to all of our generous supporters that make these awards possible. Thanks to Platinum sponsor Microsoft Studios, who will be giving every winning entry tonight a one-year subscription to the Microsoft Development Network, including access to the latest versions of Visual Studio, Windows Phone, and Windows 8 store developer accounts, and access to dozens of other developer tools. Thank And thanks also to our partners at platform sponsor Valve, who have given all of our main competition finalists the opportunity to bring their PC, Mac, and Linux games to their distribution platform, Steam. We also appreciate the support of Platinum Student Showcase sponsor, DigiPen. and Gold Students Showcase sponsor, Anjmin, as well as our new Stealth Mod crowdfunding sponsor, Sacred Diamonds. So now, without further ado, welcome back for the fourth time, 2010's IGF Grand Prize winner and this evening's IGF Awards host, Monaco creator, Andy Schatz. That music is totally pirated. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. Hello, Indies. It's been three years since I was on the stage winning for Monaco, and my journey is almost over. It's coming out next month on XBLA and Steam. Um, thank you. I'm sorry it took this long. Uh, but in those three years, and in the seven years that I've been involved in the IGF, the game industry has really changed. It's a totally different place now than it was back then. Seven years ago, y'all were crazy punk rock idols telling the world that the right way to make games was to self-fund, make small games, and the dependency was bad, and that weird was good. But guys, we got a little problem. It's a lot harder for us to be counterculture when the system we're fighting actually kinda likes us now. 
It's a lot harder to, to be punk rock when gamers embrace us too. Stop it. Hate us. Call us hipsters. I don't know. Yell at Phil Fish or something. He's right there. <laughs> Seriously, it, it makes the fighting easier when you hate us. But I mean, we're still punk. The problem is that the whole world is a little punk now. I mean, like it or not, we're not the clash anymore. We're Green Day. It's true. <laughs> Call of Duty shares shelf space with Kentucky Route Zero and Cart Life. The press that wrote about Dante's Inferno is now writing about Little Inferno. Hotline Miami and FTL are nominated for Game Developers Choice Awards, which, by the way, is hosted by Tim Schafer. Psst. Uh, show organizers, he's indie now. You might want to get a new host. We're not counterculture anymore. We are culture. So, anyways, it's true, and, and I think that's a good thing. We're culture, guys. And I'd like to thank the whole game industry, everyone in the room, for embracing us over the past seven years. And I'd like a round of applause for the indies that fought that good fight to get us here. So raise your glasses. All right, guys. Time for me to shut the hell up get on with the awarding and the celebrating and the cheering and possibly a good dose of terrible disappointment from the people you're, you're here to see. I'm nervous, guys. I, I'm, I'm nervous about Monaco, I swear. <laughs> so anyways, I'll take a deep breath and you should take a deep breath too because artists, we're starting with you. I like to think of this award as the, what the hell is that award? The nominees for Excellence in Visual Art are... Excellence in Visual Art. Guacamele. Developed by Drinkbox Studios. Stefan Duro. Augusto Quijano. Ben Thomas. Mayuran Thuraratnam. Yearwalk. Developed by Simogo. Simon Flesser. Magnus Gardebeck. Daniel Olson, Jonas Tereistad, Incredipi, developed by Northway Games and Thomas Shaheim, Colin Northway, Sarah Northway, Thomas Shaheim, Kentucky Route Zero, developed by Cardboard Computer, Jake Elliott. Tomas Kamensi, Ben Babbitt. Lovers in a Dangerous Space Time, developed by Asteroid Base, Matt Hamill, Jamie Tucker, Adam Winkles. And the Excellence in Visual Art Award goes to Kentucky Route Zero. Thank you. That's, I mean, that's really incredible. I mean, that, um, so, <laughs> Tomas is the art director on the project, um, and it's been uh, really, uh, yeah, it has been and continues to be really amazing to collaborate with, with Tomas and Ben both. Um, and, you know, I also just take just a moment to really wanted to thank um, uh, my girlfriend, Cassandra, and her family who have hosted me in, in Kentucky exploring, you know, and been so uh, generous with that to kind of let us get a sense of what that, what that place looks and feels and sounds like. So. Yeah, I wanted to thank Sarah, um, our backers on Kickstarter, and um, the Circle Graphics Habitat. Yeah. Great, great. Okay, thanks so much. They're, they're artists, they don't know what they're doing. I can say that as a programmer. <laughs> so uh, most of the IGF celebrates excellence. 
excellence in visual art, excellence in game design, and excellence in narrative, uh, not the Nuovo Award. The Nuovo Award is meant to celebrate games that venture the farthest into unknown territory, the games that totally Nuovo the crap out of us. The Nuovo Award recognizes the game by developers that made us say, by Jeeves, you made a game about what? The nominees for the Nuovo Award are? Nuovo Award. Vesper 5, developed by Michael Brown. Seven Grand Steps, developed by Mouse Chief Company, Keith Nimitz, Bill Stoneham, Levon Lordanishvili, Miriam Sherry. Cart Life, developed by Richard Hawkeye. Bien Tolete, developed by Tale of Tales, Mikel Sami, Oria Harvey, Laura Smith, Walter Hughes, Mirror Moon, developed by Santa Ragioni and Bloody Monkey, Pietro Rigi Riva, Niccolo Tedeschi, Paolo Taye. Dysphoria, <laughs> developed by Antipixelanti, Anna Anthropy, Liz Ryerson. <laughs> Little Inferno, developed by Tomorrow Corporation, Kyle Gabler, Alan Blomquist, Kyle Gray. Space Team, developed by Sleeping Beast Games, Henry Smith, Sarah Brightcrite, Philippe Lachance, Jeremy Benamo. And the winner of the Nuovo Award is Cart Life. Thanks. Thank you, everybody. Thanks. A morning suit can be avoided if you take a route straight through what is known as. <laughs> speechless. I guess we're all speechless tonight. So, uh, uh, guys, I have a confession to make. This is true. I, I rewrote this script like 12 times and I rewrote it like five minutes before I got on stage and the teleprompter people hate me um, because it, it totally just didn't sound right, unlike the following nominees for Excellence in Audio. Excellence in Audio. Bad Hotel, developed by Lucky Frame, Jan Sesnick, Jonathan Brodsky, Sean McElroy. Forty. One forty. Developed by Yeppe Carlson. Jacob Schmidt. Yeppe Carlson. Niels First Lostal. Andreas Arnil Peterson. Kentucky Route Zero. Developed by Cardboard Computer. Jake Elliott. Tomas Kamensi, Ben Babbitt. Pixel Junk 4 AM, developed by Q Games. Dylan Cuthbert, Rowan Parker, DJ Bion. Hotline Miami, developed by Denaton Games. Dennis Wedding. Jonathan Soderstrom, 
Jordan Fair. All the bands that made the music. And the winner for Excellence in Audio is... One hundred and forty. That was unexpected. Okay, um, <laughs> when, uh, when uh, Jeppe and me and uh, Peter was uh, walking in Morocco and Jeppe had this constant rambling about this rhythm game thing, I never thought that it would come together and be something like uh, people would actually play, but, <laughs> but it, it did, so that's pretty cool. Uh, I want to, th uh, I need to thank some people who helped us. Uh, I want to uh, thank Mikkel, Kemps and Peter for helping us like do some really uh, important things, like make it run smoothly and stuff. And uh, I want to thank uh, Martin at uh, Playdate for being super uh, uh, supportive uh, for me. And I want to thank everybody at Playdate for helping us test it, and especially Dino and Arndt for being cool about us working at Playdate and making a hobby project next to that. Um, and I want to thank Nils and Andreas because they made what uh, you see on the screen, all the design, it looks super cool. And I want to thank Jebe for making 90% of this game uh, and me just uh, doing some sounds and uh, turned out great. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, next up, I'm told we have a special announcement from, one of our, from our crowdfunding sponsor, an exciting new indie game startup, Sarnotech, the creators of the upcoming blockbuster, Sacred Diamonds. Sacred Diamonds is the genre-defying game that's nearly undefinable. It's an RPG, slash dating sim, slash zombie game, and that's the most original part, because for 90% of the game, you totally didn't think it was zombies. And then right at the very end, it is! We tricked you, but we can't trick you unless you give us enough money to do so. I obviously can't do this alone, and I have created a superstar team. We need your donations so I can make the music for you to hear. I personally don't like video games. I think that they're dumb and they're for kids. They said, can you make a game? <laughs> I have a credit card with a $2,500 limit, which I've already maxed out. So at this point, I feel like the financial burden is off of me and onto you, the general public, with no programming qualifications or experience in the video game industry. That almost makes too much sense. Sorry about that. Bum, 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 bum. I want the freedom to just be able to say, unplug your computers. <laughs> just throw them away. Thank you for watching uh, this Kickstarter video. It's not over. I'm, how do you like it so far? Uh... For those of you willing to contribute one dollar to our Kickstarter, you'll receive a full copy of the game and all peripheral merchandise. And if you could find it in your heart to donate even more than a dollar, I mean, I mean, I, 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 would, I would do just about anything at this point. Anything. So let's get Sacred Diamonds funded. Let's do it. I just gave them $2,000, and y'all should do the same. Fund that thing. It's gonna be awesome. All right, guys, uh, I, I do my best to tell some stories, but telling stories in games is not an easy task, seriously. 
try telling a story that involves 32 consecutive heists. It sucks. It's hard. But the nominees for the next award, the first year that we've had this award, have cracked this particular nut. They've made games where the story has primacy, where the narrative is the game. The nominees for Excellence in Narrative are... Excellence in Narrative. Dysphoria. <laughs> Developed by Antipixelanti. Anna Anthropy. Liz Ryerson. Thirty Flights of Loving. Developed by Blendo Games. Brendan Chung. Gone Home. Developed by The Fulbright Company. Yanaman Nordhagen. Carla Zimanha. Catherine Craig. Steve Gaynor. Just like I was talking to her. Cart Life, developed by Richard Hoffmeyer. Kentucky Route Zero, developed by Cardboard Computer, Jake Elliott, Tomas Kamenzi, Ben Babbitt. And the winner of the Excellence in Narrative Award goes to Cart Life. Thanks, everybody. Uh, I, maybe I'll impose myself a bit on you here for a second and thank uh, Jenny. Thanks. Oh, what is known as? John's got Brewers Brew. He gets intimidated by the dirty pigeons. If you haven't had an opportunity to go play Car Life, go play Car Life. It's awesome. Yeah. Um, it's incredible. So, uh, guys, there were, there were almost 900 entries into the IGF this year. Those 900 entries are then rated by over 200 indie devs, journalists, and industry experts, which then provide a guideline for the expert discipline-specific juries in each field to select the nominees and winners for each category. It's a Herculean task. No award is more difficult to judge than the award for technical excellence. With every other category, the juries can see and read and hear the craft, but with technical excellence, it's like being asked to judge the quality of the car's construction without being able to look under the hood. So, the coding experts who make up our jury for technical excellence approach this award from, well, I think they just get drunk and guess. So, I don't know. Anyways, these are the nominees. Technical excellence. Intrusion 2, developed by Alexei Abramenko, George Dezo. Starforge, developed by Code Hatch Corporation, William Swarren, Stephen Smalley, Nathan Frank. Little Inferno, developed by Tomorrow Corporation, Alan Blomquist, Kyle Gray, Kyle Gabler. Perspective, developed by Digipen Wittershins, Ho Hung Chen, Jason Mizell, Sean Riley. Liquid Sketch, developed by Tobias Noikom, James Therian, Tobias Noikom. And the winner of the award for technical excellence goes to 
Little Inferno. God, it's terrifying up here. If there's one thing introverted game developers like, it's standing in front of 50,000 people to accept an award. Uh, and this goes to Alan Blomquist. He's not here tonight, he's watching someone on the internet. Thank you, you're amazing. I told you, it's terrifying up here. <laughs> I've done this five times. So uh, I've, I've, I've been making games since I was seven. Um, I'm, I'm older than I look. Um, back in the, the Commodore 64 era. And those were the days when, uh, yeah, Commodore 64. They had an awesome digital distribution platform. Um, <laughs> those were the days um, when many of the industry's best games were made by a single person. I grew up dreaming of one day being a real game developer making my games. But as I grew up, so did the industry, and, and the games that I loved to play grew up too. The games that I wanted to make became too big to make on my own. So it, it kind of bummed me out as I, as I grew, as I grew older. It kind of used to bum me out when kids would tell me that they wanted to be game developers and that their favorite game was a game, not that there's anything wrong with this, I love Halo, but when a, game, when a kid says they're, they're, the game they want to make is Halo, it kind of bumps me out because they're not going to have an opportunity to make that game until they're well into their professional career. Last summer, and this is a real story, I'm not just shooting the shit up here. Last summer, I met a kid on the beach, seven-year-old kid with, with his parents, that was playing Minecraft. He was playing Minecraft with buckets of sand. That seven-year-old kid could make that game when he's seven. Seriously, Minecraft. Anyone can make Minecraft. Seven-year-old can make Minecraft. <laughs> Anyways, uh, the next award is for those... <laughs> Sorry. I got nothing up here, guys. The, ne <laughs> the next award is for those students who are about to jump off into the world of professional game development that are about to be making the games of their dreams, whether they're big or small. These ones are, they're going to be making their childhood dreams a reality. These are the nominees for best student game. Student Showcase. Back to Bed. Developed by Team 1F. Adrielle Boos, Thomas Thompson, Dion Christensen, Klaus Peterson. Zenith, developed by Arcane Kids, Russell Honor, Jacob Niffin, Tom Astor. Farge. Developed by Mahdi Barami and Moslem Rasuli. Knights of Pen and Paper. Developed by Behold Studios. Salo Camarati. Guilherme Mazzaro. Bethu Sulza. Hugo Vaz. Atem. Developed by Sassy Bot Studio, Team Cupcake, Thomas Butenweg, Marta Clavero Jimenez, Jendrik Ilner, Seen Rin. Mindful XP Volume. Developed by Mindful XP Team, Michael Lee, Dan Lin, Felix Park. Blackwell's Asylum, developed by Black Pipe, Claudia Billy Straidi, Giuseppe Enrico Franchi, Melita Stathis, Stefan Gorich, Pulse, developed by Team Pixel Pie. And the winner for the IGF award for best student game is Zenith. Oh, 
Oh wow, I mean, it was, it was enough of an honor just to have you guys watch that like 10 second clip of our game. Um, we, we really want to thank uh, the whole committee behind the IGF because it's, it's really an inspiration. Uh, like after last year's is what really motivated us to put like all this work into the game just to make something that was maybe worth uh, being with all these like incredible games. Uh, and we also want to thank our uh, friend Julie, who without his sage advice, I don't think any of this would be possible. Thank you. So uh, this is the point in the script, nope, th that was a long time ago, where I ran out of ideas. Um, but considering that the audience award crowdsources the judging, I figure I may as well crowdfund the naming rights. So the Humble Brony Bundle Award presented by Expired Popsicle and made possible by Notch, and people like you, goes to Euro Truck Simulator 2013? I don't know. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> um, I completely honestly, I don't even have the card up here. <laughs> We're gonna. This isn't a joke. <laughs> The audience award goes to <laughs> shot, 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 shot. I'm doing pretty good for sucking this year. Thank you. So, um, I guess first we have to thank our family and friends and girlfriends who kept us sane and alive during the process. Um, <laughs> as well as our fans and backers and testers and everyone who, without them, this couldn't be possible. So, thank you and everyone else here. Because without everyone here, I wouldn't, we wouldn't be inspired to make such games. Um, thank you. That, that covers most of it, but I'd also like to thank these guys that did the, the, the music and the writing, as well as Justin. And part of the inspiration was Star Trek and Firefly and other outstanding science fiction shows. Without those, we wouldn't have FTL. Thank you. Bertrand Sarno here again, and I just want to say thank you for donating to our Kickstarter. We were able to raise our $350,000 like we asked. Unfortunately, Sacred Diamonds is no closer to being completed. We ran into some problems along the way, some money was mismanaged, and we realized we didn't really have any experience as a video game company, which turned out to be a bigger problem than we thought. What I did was I bought some very rare vinyl, so I would get inspired. This one cost at least $50,000, not that money has any value. Um, I was only able to get one copy, and I think two would really, one for each ear. Certain people in the company insisted on spending uh, the money a certain way, maybe not the best way. Well, of course my flight from Sydney to Los Angeles was $20,000. <laughs> Did you think I was gonna fly economy like a peasant? <laughs> We have a new Kickstarter that we're starting where we're asking for $500,000. We think that if we get more money, all our problems will be solved. So check out our new Kickstarter. Thank you for donating. Sorry we goofed up, but hey, you know what they say. Better luck next time. Thanks again. This is Bertrand Sarno signing off. Keep donating. <laughs> You guys made that. You guys made that.
but you should give them more money. They need it. So, uh, um, yeah, it's all you. <laughs> Look what you did. Anyways, moving on. I like to say, this is something I say all the time, that games are a, a, a combination of experience and mechanics. The experience is the, the story, the, the music, the art, everything that you experience firsthand. It's, it's the thing you grow infatuated with. It's the, thing that makes you, it's the thing that makes you all fluttery. But the mechanics, the mechanics are the thing you fall in love with. The, th the mechanics are the thing that form the relationship between the game and the player. The mechanics are the thing that allow you the love to, put, to make space for that game on your desktop. <laughs> I'm so sorry, guys. <laughs> I'm working hard up here. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I passed cert like last week. Give me a break. <laughs> the, so the award for excellence in design goes to the game that went beyond simple arousal and went to form a deep personal relationship with us. The nominees for Excellence in Design are... Excellence in Design. Super Hexagon. Developed by Terry Cavanaugh. Nia Houston. Jen Frank. Terry Cavanaugh. FTL. Faster Than Light. Developed by Subset Games. Matthew Davis, Justin Ma, Ben Prunty, Tom Schubert. Superspace, developed by David Skamehorn and Alexander Bard. Doug Zwick, Alex Bard, David Skamehorn. Samurai Gun, developed by Bo Blythe. Pilgrim, developed by Droken and Ryan Roth, Alexander Martin, Merte Butterbeigel, Ryan Roth. And the award for excellence in design goes to FTL. <laughs> Again. This doesn't make any sense, but thank you. <laughs> I guess um, we wouldn't have the design for FTL with what, without what inspired us, like the various board games that we always play and Weird Worlds and Flotilla and Splunky and tons of other games. Red November, Battlestar Galactica. Yeah. We go on and on and on. So thank Such you to works. everybody who made those games. Yes. Thank you. Please give a warm IGF welcome to the winner of last year's Seamus McNally Grand Prize Award, Fez, Renaud Bedar and Phil Fish. What an incredible honor it is to give away the Seamus McNally Grand Prize at this year, the 15th Independent Game Festival. 15 years of celebrating independent talent. That means it's been going on since 1998. In 1998, I was 13. The IGF started in the last century. It started in the last millennium, actually. Amazing! 1,000 years of celebrating independent talent. And here are the nominees. Seamus McNally Grand Prize. FTL, Faster Than Life, developed by Subset Games, Matthew Davis, Justin Ma, Ben Prunty, Tom Schubert, Little Inferno, developed by Tomorrow Corporation, Kyle Gray, Kyle Gabler, 
Alan Blomquist. Kentucky Route Zero, developed by Cardboard Computer, Jake Elliott, Tomas Kamensi, Ben Babbitt. Cart Life, developed by Richard Hoffmeyer. Hotline Miami, developed by Deniton Games, Dennis Wedden, Jonathan Soderstrom, Jordan Fair, all the bands that made the music. And the winner of the 2013 Seamus McNally Grand Prize is Cart Life. Confidence is a preference for the habitual voyeur of what is known as A morning suit can be avoided if you take a route straight through what is known as John's got through his crew, he gets intimidated right. by the dirty Thanks Well, um, I got a little more booze in me, so I, I might be a little more verbose this time around, I guess Um Really, thanks to uh, Jenny Kuglin so much. She's, uh, I, I tried to quit many times, she wouldn't let me. Um, so really, it, you know, it's, it's her. Um, thanks to Dad, my, my family, my sister, and her great kids. Don, um, the Eugene Fiction Group. I ran a really shitty version of this game by them as a piece of fiction, and they hated it. So they told me to make a game, and it, it's a better fit. Um, so thanks to them. Thanks, Devin, as well. Uh, Get your butt back to class. You gotta graduate, man. Uh, thanks to the other um, nominees, really, uh, Cactus also. I didn't know that any of this really existed until kind of recently. And uh, the idea of being able to do it alone, the tools are super easy, everybody jump in and replace me. <laughs> as soon as you can, it's super, um, it's easier than you think, thanks. That's it for me. Thanks for watching. Thanks to the IGS Platinum sponsor, Microsoft Pla uh, Platform sponsor, Valve Platinum sponsor, Showcase sponsor, DigiPen Gold, Sh Student Showcase sponsor, Anjmin, and our crowdsourcing sponsor, Sacred Diamonds. <clears throat> no, Mega64. Thanks, Mega64. Stick around for Tim and the Game Developers Choice Awards, and don't forget to check out Monaco on Steam and XBLA next month. Thank you.